100 dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 27 in our series, NerdDice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails application using Rails 7 to uh, manage tabletop role playing. And I just got finished from the, the retro. Uh, it's been a, a few days. Uh, took a while for me to get the, uh, the makeup off of my uh, eyes from uh, the mediocre karaoke performance. Um, I did a bunch of songs when I went about doing that, so uh, I can I made the most of the uh, the face paint there. Uh, but we do have a couple of loose ends we want to tie up before we start looking at the actual functionality that we intend to develop for this application. I think I might have said in the retro retrospective that I was going to do some like wireframing and stuff like that, but before we even get to that point, uh, what I want to do is kind of do the wish list of our uh, application in terms of features and try to prioritize those um, to build up our backlog. Um, and we'll uh, talk more about that as we get there. But uh, before we do that, I want to um, take out uh, care of a couple of um, our action items in our backlog. So um, we had um, in the, this is the one we're going to take a look at today. Um, and I guess I'll just start there, but you can see that there are a few other things that I want to take care of before, um, like the line that I'd stop at, assuming we don't get a new version of devise that we need to, uh, to adapt to, uh, will be here. Um, th these other two are kind of later on sorts of things, but I would like to knock out this list of things before we move into the phase where we actually build our backlog and prioritize it. Um, so the issue here, and we'll move this into in progress. So on the, uh, a couple times during the devise epic, there were situations where we sent an email, um, like do assert emails or something like that. Uh, we expect one email to be sent. Uh, and there were, it, said, it was saying that there were no emails sent. And um, the, the challenge there is that sometimes it takes a bit of time for um, that to catch up. We kind of hacked around it in some places because we, we, we just moved the assert emails into a different place, which kind of as a side effect allowed enough time to elapse in order for that to take place. But when in the build, when I move my code merge the code into main. Of course, it only happens when you go into your, your actual main branch and it shows on your GitHub repo that your build is failing. Um, so here, I, I re-ran the, the job, so it's, uh, it passed. But uh, we did get a failure the first time I attempted it. And that failure was in the... Um, user can reconfirm email from a logged out state by entering a new email. Um, and so we went and tried to get the, um, the new email token and use that. And um, instead of uh, uh, visiting that page and it says your email has been sex successfully confirmed, it said um, it brought us just to the login page. Um, so that's kind of what, what happened there. And, um, so let me take a look at the, um, the issue that I created here. So when you're doing a bug, you want to deal with kind of the steps to reproduce that. Uh, and we will deal with, uh, with, we will do this, um, as we, at, at the beginning of this video. So I'll, I'll actually go and step by step and we'll reproduce, um, this bug and then, um, we'll try to fix it. So first step here is to um, go into lock and unlock test and right now we've got this line 154 this sleep 0 0.1 so if we take that and uh, comment it out and then try to run one of the tests that call that method you can see 56, line 56 is an example of this. I was just doing the documentation for the, uh, the GitHub issue here. So line 56, we do this. 
and it will say that the token has not changed. Um, so you can see it's um, expecting the token to not equal the token, but it, it is equaling it. Uh, let me look at our test logs here. So you go um, at the base of your root directory is your logs. Uh, we can take a look at the um, logs there and find this token. near the bottom. So we've got the email here. You can see farther down, we've got another email that makes it to the log, um, but by just, it's kind of a race condition sort of thing. So the log winds up getting written um, to test here um, as the server is kind of finishing things up. But the assertion about our, um, our change here is failing because there isn't enough time for this to occur. So if we go in and re, um, redo this sleep method, we're sleeping a tenth of a second. I originally did it one second and that was way too long. Um, or it, I mean, it solved the, the, the test, but it turns out if you can do it um, in a tenth of the amount of time, then let's do it in the tenth of the amount of time. Let's, while we're at it, Oh, no, we'll, so we've, we've reproduced the issue. Let me make sure that I've got, um, yep. Um, and noting that it's not giving enough time for that email to be added to the action mailer based deliveries array. Uh, and then we call the, um, the token, the get token method with the wrong email. Uh, and that's what's causing our issue to take place here. And um, the original, if you look at, the uh, retro app here, add sleep to that um, that method, um, so, and then it says, and um, other system tests that send email uh, to allow them to not fail intermittently. So uh, that's kind of, uh, I mean, either way, this is gonna be a bit hacky, but in terms of like how I'm going to solve this problem, I don't think I want to, uh, to sleep here, uh, if I can help it uh, by calling the word sleep, what I'd rather prefer to do is like something like throw in a Ruby block here and then create a method that essentially takes the yielded method uh, that calls yield on this block and then sleeps whatever the amount of time we have there. So, um, Let's get back to our status quo here. I think that should still pass. So let's start by fixing this method here. Um, and we'll, we'll do what um, is suggested in the, what, what I suggested as a uh, solution in the issue We'll create an, an await jobs method in uh, system test case. So um, what we'll do here is application system test case. Create a new method. start with what we had before. I might tweak that uh, default and see if we can get kind of at what point uh, not enough sleep is occurring in our, um, in our job fails here. So, um, and it's just going to be yield and then sleep. sleep time. And I think that will give us what we need. Let's go in to to there 
can see if that fixes our broken test. Ooh, what have I done? Unexpected float literal. Oh. There we go. I don't want to copy in that whole statement, just the value. And that seemed to have worked. Let's uh, run the whole test class because this, this was failing in two places. Make sure that both of them work here. So that seems to have worked. Let's see how low can we go in terms of our default here. So we've got 0 0.1. Let's cut it by a factor of 10 and see if that still passes. We'll just do line 56 here. So that was not enough time. But let's see if we have 0 0.05. That works. We'll run it a few times just to. See if we've got consistency there. So I think that works. Now we want to. Um, to take this um, await jobs block and put it in the other places where we're clicking on things that are sending emails. So the, the place we'll start is where our test failed here, our build failed. So um, can reconfirm email from logged out state. And you can see that this actually was in our concern here, email changeable line 70. That's where it's failing, but that might not be where it's actually clicking. Valid confirmation. Yeah, so that's not where the problem is. User dot confirmation token. See where valid confirmation is being called. Probably in both of the. You know, change test. Happy path unconfirmed. So that is in our item here, standard email edit preconditions, click on update, and then that email validation flash is when we would execute this. And then 
let's think through some of the other places where we are calling. I guess it's when we when we when we would be calling the um, no, because even if we so change email. Let's just walk through some of these. I'll fire up the server. Login, login page here, forgot your password. So send me reset password instructions. So in both places there, we're doing this in our user sign up test, we're doing this. Click on sign up. Reconfirm email and change email. Let's look for a click. Confirm here. Log in and log out. We're not being sent an email there. Change password. We are not being sent a token there. Change email. Um, not being sent there. Cancel user registration. We're not sending email. So I think that's all of the places here. Let's run our whole suite. our whole system test suite because we haven't touched anything else um, while we're waiting for this to complete uh, just uh, check out I recently published uh, my 200th video so kind of did a retrospective on that um, we've got the rail 7 getting started guide that provides kind of more of the um, 
goes through the the Rails Seven uh, getting started guide, uh, kind of right after Rails Seven came out, and kind of goes through the very kind of the basics of like how to work with models, create a route, um, and then does a little a few things outside of the guide, like setting up action tests and doing a stimulus controller and stuff like that. So um, feel free to check that out while we're waiting for um, kind of as these nerd dice videos are coming out and we're building the live app we have a couple of places where we're uh, we have uh, other series where we've um, covered some of the concepts that you'll use when developing a rails application so everything seems to have passed here I'm sure Rubocop will have something to say since we added some cognitive complexity with those blocks. Only two. Method length. Uh, layout space. We'll autocorrect our layout space. Email change, happy path confirmed. That's in email changeable. method here down right. so that might get us Expected token and uh, I have created a syntax error. Def it's because I want to just call it, not define it. All right, so Rubocop is happy. Only changed. The, we'll just run one of the um, uh, which one was that? That was email changeable. Email change happy path unconfirmed. So we'll call change email test. To ensure that it's still working. That is good. We will look at our status. Um, when 
I clicked on the log and VS Code thought that it was in uh, an Apex log from Salesforce, so it created an SFBX folder in the directory. Okay, so let's take a look at our diff. Uh, that method needs a comment. That method needs a comment. All right, everything else is just using that await jobs. There, so I'll pause and write my comments for this, and then uh, we should be able to commit and close this. All right, so I've got my comment on this method. I've got my comment on the new method here in email changeable. So I think I'm ready to, oh, let me hit status. I should be doing this from a branch. Write my message. All right, I've got my commit message here. Let me make sure I don't have anything unsaved. VS Code release notes. All right, now. Working directory is clean. Push to the remote branch here. That should kick off a new action. We will. pull requests into main the we'll just use the commit message there from the one commit create the pull request allow time for the for the job to complete I'll Pause and oop. one failing check. What is our problem here on the CI? It's not my fault. I will just rerun it. I'll pause and hope that that builds successfully. Aha, so the issue is that our build is running with Ruby 3.1.3 and I do not have, I'm running 3.1.2. So let's resolve this. Actually, the, I'll make it a separate video here. Let's see if we can change our build attribute to Come 
Actions, main. I'm going to make this 0.2. And then we'll um, get status. And our items here, we're going to now get push dash F, force push to that branch. Make sure I signed my commit properly. Amended commit works. We will pause and re allow for this to complete. All right, our build is green. Go into the CLI here. Branch push that will merge the pull request, cut off the subsequent build. I will go to issue. That auto closed the issue. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. So that did that. And our issues moved it down. All right. So uh, while we're at it, so the uh, we'll add. Rather than fixing it in this video, we'll uh, add an item to our backlog to Ruby 3.1.3. Yeah, I guess I can do that next. It can be a quick video. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.